How's it going, everyone? This is my first Hot Toys review. Not my first Hot Toys figure, but my first time reviewing a Hot Toys figure. A Hot Toys Django Fett figure. So let's take a look at it. So it's got a nice front cover for it with uh, special features. It's got some amazing cover art as per usual with Hot Toys figures. So as you can see, yes, I've already opened this up. So first look at the figure right out of the box. Now I have to say, I really like the way it looks. It looks amazing, especially with this lighting and then depending on the lighting that you use. But when I've had several Hot Toys figures before, although I have to admit, it's a lot lighter than I would expect it to be just looking at it, you know, right off the bat. Um, to be honest with you, I, I love this figure. I think the paint job is amazing. Although I would have probably preferred die cast, you know, since it has it has that chrome look to it. Now this isn't the same type of chrome look as the new Mandalorian figure coming out in a little while, but um, it'd be kind of cool if it maybe had more of a shine to it, I guess. But it does depend on the lighting. Like I said, it looks great. Although I think die cast would have really done it even more justice. It just would have been even more um, I guess intimidating. It would have had that weight to it. It would have had, I don't know, just more realism, I guess. So as you can see, it comes with quite a few accessories. And then you got more accessories in the bottom, of course. They just really seem to always go above and beyond, like two versions of the jetpack, for example, and all the effects. So let's get everything out. All right, so these are all the accessories that Django Fett comes with. Uh, which one should we start with? I think a lot of people probably want me to start with the head skull first, but I'm going to save that one for the last to build up to it. So why don't we start with the pistols? I guess we would call these laser pistols. Um, so they look pretty good. And they're, they look metallic, even though they're not, they're not die cast, but they look like they're made of metal. You wouldn't really know the difference just by looking at them. And even on each one, there's just an amazing amount of uh, detail on it. I always love how Hot Toys is able to capture small details on these accessories and just the right down to just how precise the shape is and everything. It doesn't look cheap. It looks very well made. The interchangeable arm blade, which I will show you all later. Um, it's pretty neat. And this actually comes out, by the way. Um, that's for an accessory you can add which is the next one I'll show you. So you take this grappling hook out and then you can exchange it for this long grappling hook with a line attached, which is a wire. And then you just peg that in there. And what's so cool about the way they did this is you can do it with the other interchangeable arm gauntlet as well. So this grappling hook actually comes out too. And so you can choose which version of it, whether it's this one, or this one that you take out, whether which one you want to attach the grappling hook with the line on. All right, so you also have a lot of miscellaneous accessories, which I believe this is the one that he used uh, when he was trying to assassinate uh, Padme with the worms. It's too bad, though. I have to admit, I think it would have been awesome if they, because I'm so used to how to his engineering all their accessories to be functional that Part of me expected this to open up or some part to move to show the worms inside or to have something like that. That would have been really cool. Either way, it's a nice accessory to include and they didn't have to and they did. Now this one, I'm not really sure what it is. I know it's on the Hot Toys description on Sideshow Collectibles website. I think one of these is a jammer. My guess, I, I thought this would have been like a communication device, but Apparently, uh, that wasn't listed on the accessories list. So two different versions of the jetpack. Um, I think it's, I'm not, a, never been a fan of the clips, but at the same time, it's already magnetic, which is amazing. I'm glad they did that because it's so much easier just to, just to magnetize it on there instead of having to clip it on. It's such a pain. But I think the clips aren't kind of nice because I noticed that the magnet almost makes it easier to get it to clip on for some reason. I don't know how, but... And it's kind of just makes it more secure. So, you know, in case the magnet is not strong enough, but I, for me, I find just coming on with the magnet by itself is good enough. Like it doesn't really, unless you're like really rough or something, but 
The magnet seems to do the trick for me, so that's what I usually use. It's way faster. And then still warming up to the head sculpt, we have what goes on the head sculpt, the, um, the hand gear, the comlink device, uh, which I was actually surprised to find that this moves. So you can have it above his head or his mouth or however you want. I did not know that it was going to do that. Some nice detail paint work on the back and on the side. You even have some weathering. And I didn't expect them to just slide it over the head sculpt. I thought that it would have been a different way of attaching it. But, and then you have the metal dome plate on top of the head, which is has no dent in it, which you can exchange with the one that does have a dent, which is really cool. I did not expect that either. Just shows how Hot Toys likes to go above and beyond. I think I prefer the dome. And then of course you have all of the fire effects for the jetpacks. You have two for the, the two engines on the jetpack and then you have one for the rocket that shoots out. And so what you do is you attach them like so. Take the rocket out. It's a bit tricky to get this part in first and then you put the rocket in. For some reason it doesn't want to go quite all the way in, but it looks pretty cool. Now I do, I love the effects that Hot Toys always includes. It's a nice bonus accessory. Um, personally, I, I'm not a huge like fan or like I don't tend to use the effects that often. I think you really have to have the lighting right to make it look good. And then of course, these articulate as well. And they are limited, they're not, uh, they don't go all the way around, just 90 degrees this way. And then 90 degrees that way. Now, unfortunately, the other jetpack doesn't have any articulation that I'm aware of. These don't move. And this, as far as I can tell, doesn't come out. So I was a little bit surprised about that, I thought. That one would have been removable. Although you could get creative and try to kind of squeeze the effects in. They don't go in all the way because they're not really supposed to. But if you wanted to, you could try that. And I'm still putting the head scoped off. So you got the hands. You got two uh, pistol gun grip hands. Which have pretty good detail on them. And then you got two fist hands, which are pretty standard. And then, of course, the stand, a dynamic flight pose stand, which you can move. And this one, I noticed they made deeper, go deeper into the stand itself, which is nice because I had some issues with that before. It was just I think it was just me, like, wondering how that could stay secure when the other ones are so small. But this one's pretty nice. And then, of course, you have the claw grip. And last but not least, the head sculpt. Everything everyone's been waiting for. Oh, wait, actually, I forgot about the poncho. So it, he does come with that poncho that he was wearing on a Camino. And I actually didn't expect that because I've never seen this on one of Hot Toys' capes or ponchos before, but they have a button that you can snap together on the side, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> so there's also wires in this poncho as well. So you can pose the poncho in all sorts of different ways, just around the edges of it. Okay, but now, last but not least, the head sculpt. So, as if you were complaining that this head sculpt isn't spot on, it is, from what I can tell, different from the prototype pictures when I first saw it a year, what was it, a year ago? And yeah, it does look a little bit different to me. It looks like they went for a younger version. And it does look different to me from the prototype pictures. And of course, we had the updated pictures recently. But do I think it looks bad? No, I don't think it really looks bad necessarily. It's pretty spot on, especially with certain lighting. The lighting really makes a huge difference in how realistic and how spot on this head sculpt looks. And as per usual, the hair sculpt, I have to say, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing work. I feel like it's getting more advanced. Yeah, I feel like that still looks like the actor that they're trying to portray. 
Um, so, so here we have the figure in full. So just a side view. I actually prefer this jetpack. I don't know why. I feel like that was the jetpack he wore most of the movie. I actually don't remember that other jetpack. I'll have to watch it again. But. So here's a closer view of Django Fett. Um, as you can see, as you probably already knew, the range finder, I think that's what can come down and up. Now, I am kind of surprised it's actually a little bit loose and feels kind of fragile. That's not usually what I would expect, but uh, I mean, it still works. It holds its uh, pose, so I'm not complaining. And of course, I think the helmet just looks amazing. Um, a lot of, it's got this shine to it. Maybe not chrome plated or anything, but it still has a shine. And the posing's pretty decent. It's pretty good. You can look up pretty far. I actually like how they had the neck skin kind of sculpted and then painted. There's actually details on the neck. So it's not just a plain neck head, neck sculpt. And of course, you know, obviously 360 and all that good stuff uh, side to side. I always see Jingle felt like this. He's always like looking down like that. Um, and then of course you have all the armor on the chest. You have this almost pleathery like material right here with different layers. This almost seems kind of like it's coming up a little bit too much. I'm not sure. So yeah, and then the pleather kind of continues on and it goes on the back as well, right there. Of course with this pleather as well is what it looks like. With all of the utility belt materials, which can go every which way. And then it continues down here to the holsters. All right, so holsters, holsters are a bit tight for the pistols. Um, so I always worry about breaking these things. So I'm usually pretty cautious about how I use them. And when you go down, you have all the shin pads, knee pads, and all that stuff. Details here. It's pretty strange, actually, the way it looks right here. I guess that's a, oh, that's weird. It's like a foam material. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I do think it looks kind of strange when you pull the pants up. In certain poses, I was noticing that. You can see the plastic body kind of exposed. Now, these are not bad articulately. They're just kind of stiff, I noticed, but actually, it's still pretty good. And of course you have the gauntlets with these tubes that go in and tuck underneath these sleeves there. You actually have a lot of fine details on these gauntlets, like all of these different, I think grappling hooks it looks like, or rockets. And you got some nice weathering of course on everything, um, mo mostly on the gauntlets also. You got the details here. And then of course on the back, you have the back armor and then the hooks. Got nice details on the back of the head. And so that's what it looks like with the jet back on. And that's what it looks like with this version of the jet back on. All right, so real quick, what can this figure do? First off, you can exchange the gauntlet right here. So this gauntlet piece is actually magnetic and has two pegs to peg into the arm. So you take it off like this. So you can kind of see the magnet right there. And then you switch it off with this blade gauntlet when he was using to try to keep from falling off. And it just tucks underneath the sleeve like so. You see the magnet right there and the pegs. And it actually clips on pretty easily with think it'd be more difficult, but really nice feature. I love that. Uh, correct me if in the comment sections, remind me in the comment section, I can't remember. I could have sworn he had two gauntlets with blades and that he was using both of his arms to try to not fall off the building. Um, but I could be wrong. Maybe I had to watch the movie again and see if it was just one arm. It all happened so fast. No, but uh, seriously, I really can't remember. So let me know if y'all know that. Um, but that's awesome. I love how they included that. You know, I feel like they didn't have to, or, you know, the other toy companies might have not, especially the way it was engineered, but they did, and that's just amazing. And so, of course, as mentioned previously, you can take these grappling hooks in and out of the 
of the blade exchange section or part or whatever you want to call it. And so they just hook in there. And of course, you can exchange them for the grappling one hook, like so. And you can just have them grappling, hooking everything. There you go. Now, in terms of the other gauntlet, you actually can uh, have the flamethrower. It's hard to get this part out, but you have to take this cylinder part on the top out in order to put the flame effect in. It's probably easier just to take the whole thing off and then do it. Yeah, it comes out like that. And then you can take your flame effect and put it in there in the gauntlet, and then you have a flamethrower. And as you can see, this is what the flame effect looks like. With the right lighting, it looks pretty cool. Let's see what the head sculpt looks like unmasked. And here you have Django Fett with the unmasked head sculpt. Again, it really, the lighting really does make a difference in how good this head sculpt looks. So what you do is you take that headset and it's a very flexible headset and you just push the headset over like this. And there you have it. That's pretty good. All right, so checking out the articulation for this figure. Like I said, the head can move side to side, 360, down, up. That's about how far up we can go with the head, like so. And so up here, the shoulders is a bit more stiff because of the pleather material right here. Um, this area, I wonder if there's a fat suit under here. It seems like a ratcheted joint. I don't know, maybe that's just the material. Um, but yeah, I can move about probably that high. If I push any farther, I feel like I'm gonna break it. Um, move about that high this way, as far as back goes, about that far probably. The elbow is a standard 90 degrees, it looks like. Oh no, no, actually, looks maybe double. Yeah, it can go pretty far actually, I'm surprised. Um, I hadn't pushed it that far yet. Okay, so that's good. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, it does feel ratchet, I think it is for the shoulder. Um, of course, the hand's just standard, you know. You got ratchet and 360, you can go this way, you can go pretty far, that way and that way. Interesting how the fabric doesn't go all the way down. That's not usually what happens. There virtually is really no articulation of the stomach, chest, or anything like that. You can't really turn them much either in the waist or anything, just because this is all so heavy. Um, or is this moves whichever way. Uh, in terms of the head, the splits, eh, probably right there. I don't feel like pushing it much farther than that. And then 90 degrees, yeah, not quite. Not quite. Goes back a little bit, but again, it feels like there's probably a fat suit under here. I think that could be what's limiting it. I could be wrong. Or it's the material. But this material is pretty thin, so maybe the fat suit. So the knees wow that can go pretty far so double on the knees actually ratcheted which is awesome uh of course you can turn turn the legs and all that stuff and like i said before the feet you know they have some good articulation they're just a bit stiff going this way side to side it can go up to about there and back to about there and yeah that's pretty much, I think that about covers the articulation. So this is one of my favorite poses, most iconic ones by Django Fett. Um, so what are my thoughts on this figure? Um, as per usual, I love how, one little side note, I love how Hot Toys always has metal nameplates for their Star Wars figures. I just wish they would do that for more of their figures. Um, my thoughts are, I love the way this figure looks. I mean, just looking at it, it's amazing. Um, I'm pretty sure, even though like, you know, we like to say, oh, that'd have been awesome if it was chrome plated like the Mandalorian. 
But at the same time, you know, thinking about back to the movie, is this accurate to the way Django Fett looks in the movie? I mean, I feel like it is. I don't know if the costume really was that chrome shine to it. It was really more of a weathered costume, um, an older kind of like you could tell it was battle worn a little bit. So while still being relatively new compared to Boba Fett's at least. But so that's why it doesn't really bother me that much, whether chrome plate or not. I still think this looks amazing. Um, there's so many different accessories and ways you can pose this figure. So many options like with the head dome, for example, that they didn't have to do, which I don't even remember seeing in the prototype pictures. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. And I was even surprised by the grappling hooks that you could exchange the grappling hook for the arm without the blades and the arm exchange with the blades. Like they didn't even have to do that. They could have just done it for this one. So that's so cool that they actually did that for both. As far as everything else, um, yes, I do wish the hands were better. <laughs> Otto's hands are sometimes a pain because they come off easily or they're just hard to put on. Harley Quinn's hands are a very big pain. Um, but I have to say with this one, though, the hands are easier to peg on. But other than the hands, ideally, what would make this a perfect figure for me is if they did a full die cast for all of the metal plates. Now, maybe that's too much to ask for. I don't know. I, I just think I've seen them do a C-3PO and I've seen them do with all the Iron Man, most of the Iron Man figures. So it's like, is it too much to ask to have one version of Jingle Fett where we can have all of these metal pieces and die casts? That would have been amazing. Considering that we're getting the Iron Man Mark One and almost full die cast too. Not all of it, but I mean, and if you couldn't do the whole thing in die cast, at least maybe the helmet and the chest pieces and the gauntlets or maybe the legs or something like that. I'll take anything. Uh, I just think it would have given the figure more weight, more, I don't know what to say, like va not value, but it would give it more of a presence when you're moving the figure around, I feel like. And it would probably, I don't know if it would look any much different because Hot Toys is so good at the way they paint the metal pieces. Um, like, I wouldn't know right now if that was die cast I'm looking at right now or not. At the same time, though, that would just completely make the figure 100% for me. Um, I still love this figure. This was something I was wishing Hot Toys would make about a year and a half ago, and then they announced it, and now I have it. So I'm just thankful that Hot Toys made this figure and that they did such a good job with all the accessories and the different uh, functionality of all the pieces as per usual. So overall, yeah, I mean, this is one of my, I don't know if it's my favorite figure of all time, but it's probably, it's pretty close up there to my Hot Toys Obi-Wan episode three figure. The only reason it doesn't surpass that is because the head sculpt isn't as good as the Obi-Wan figure. I feel like there's something about the prototype that I liked more. I don't know what it was, whether it was the texture of the skin or something about it. This head sculpt is just, it's a little bit different. It's still great, way better than you would get from any other company that I'm aware of. Um, so yeah, I think this is probably a close second to my Obi-Wan figure. Uh, almost tied, it's hard to say, because I just love this character so much. Um, if you love episode two, if you like Jango Fett, even just the way he looks, then, I mean, I think it's a great figure to have.